hey all, welcome back to the channel. Today is new gear day. I love new gear day. Today I have a new skid plate. It is Iron Baltic. They are in Estonia. And I am gonna be doing the complete disassembly of my beat to pieces. Look, this is wrapped, this is wrapped around the frame here. This is so beat up. Um, my beat to pieces aluminum skid plate. And I'm gonna be doing the full install of the new Iron Baltic HDPE uh, plastic skid plate, which is made out of uh, similar stuff to hockey boards. If you're if you're a hockey player, um, they're they're bulletproof. It, it has much more uh, much less sliding resistance, and uh, than aluminum because aluminum just locks right up on rocks and i'm going to be doing side by sides because um mrs brute's uh atv has a full aluminum skid plate so i'm going to be finding a big rock somewhere after i get this installed in my next video and i'm going to be fetching up on it on her bike and i'm going to be gliding across it on my bike so stay tuned it's gonna be fun so the unfortunate step one, um, and I want to do a time lapse of this because I don't want you guys, you guys don't need to watch this disassembly stuff, um, is taking all this stuff off, including my plow mount, which is going on Mrs. Brute's bike now. Um, I'm also replacing these. Yeah, so I'm just going to time lapse this so you guys can have my next hour or so's work done in a few seconds. So, as you can see, that took a long time to take the old skid plate off. The bolts were all bent. Um, yeah, because I beat the bike really hard. So, that's why I need a new skid plate. Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like without the skid plate. And I have to take the A-arms off as well. So, I'll be doing that next. But, oh look, there's some dirt. There we go. Nobody can complain. I don't. Uh, I don't clean my bike. <laughs> Just wanted to give you a tour of the. This is the back piece of the old skid plate, and you can see it's pretty wobbly. There's that, and where the real mess was was if you look at this front of the skid plate, it is absolutely brutally. It's brutalized. So I'm moving up. I have an upgraded skid plate that will not deform, will not cause any problems, will not cause any edges that'll uh, that'll hook on rocks, etc. Plus, it's gonna slide. Alrighty, so the next step I have is to unbox the skid plate that I received from Iron Baltic. The model that I got was the KVF 750 Brute Force code 2.1150 and uh yeah so i'm gonna unbox it and show you guys what i got i would like to give a shout out to the guys at the iron baltic shipping department these guys know how to pack product uh even though it's almost bulletproof as it is um this was very, very well, very well packed. And uh, it's just taken me a bit to, to, to unpack it. So thumbs up, because this came all the way from Estonia. So Estonia to Canada, and it came, yeah, came fast too. So something they slipped in the box, which I'm pretty stoked about as a catalog. Everybody likes bathroom reading. Everybody likes bathroom reading. Um, so, you can see that they have aluminum skid plates for Arctic Cat, Can Am, CF Moto, High Sun, Honda, Cowie, Kimco. You name it, they sell skid plates for it. They also sell plow gear, they sell farm gear, they sell trailers, rotary brooms, whatever rotary brooms are. So you gotta check these these guys out. They are not only a skid plate company, although they excel at that. Um, yeah, they have tons of stuff. Like, like 
confirming stuff. Yeah, and they also gave me a ton of stickers, so I'm stoked on that. So looking through the packing list, this is everything that came with. So you can tell they're doing quality control by checking all the parts. So you know that you're uh, you know you're getting what you're buying, um, unlike some other companies that just throw stuff in a box and hope it gets there. Um, this is quality control um, checked. And look what I found. I found the person that packed it, Carrie. Carrie, you're awesome. You pack stuff good. The stuff that you packed from Estonia got to Canada and it, it was just, it was mint. Good job. Oh, I've got everything unpacked and I have an extremely pleasant surprise. I just want to show you one thing before I, uh, before I go through the, uh, before I go through the, what was in it. See these, these are unprotected. These are your, these are your footwells on your Brute Force 750 and most other bikes. This skid plate kit, which I did not notice, has complete footwell protection, um, which means I won't be having any, having any broken footwells. Um, any other ATV I've had, I broke the footwells right out of them, and I've, I've, been, I've been lucky that I have not broken the footwells out of my Brute Force 750 yet. But look at this, folks. Okay, so this is the rear. This is the rear of it, and I'm looking at it from the top down. Footwell protection. Heck yeah. So I'm looking at the quality of this and it's good. Um, it's really good. It's, it's thicker than I, it's thicker than I thought. This has to be, I don't know, at least a centimeter thick, which is whatever it is in American, but it's thick. It's really thick. So I will not wear this out. I won't even come close to wearing this out. And you can see, uh, there are oil hole, like oil filter holes, and you can see plow mount. I'm sorry, I'm pointing with my finger with my camera in, the, in my hand. You, you can see um, oil filter holes, uh, diff oil hole, and those two slotted holes right there are for plow mounts. Yeah, good job. Well, well engineered, I'm, I'm pretty stoked on that. So I'm just gonna drop that right there. We're gonna go around back here and look at this. It's doubled up in the front. So instead of one layer of the hockey board HDPD plastic, it is two layers and it's thick. So this is the part right here is where you traditionally hit. Mine was bashed in like a soup bowl as you guys already know. Look at this, what a treat this is. That this is gonna, I'm not gonna have to worry about wearing this out cause there's, it's, and it looks like it's replaceable. Um, I'll have to check with uh, with Iron Baltic to see if this is a replaceable part. If you ever do wear through this, I'm pretty sure they would be able to sell you just the replacement part here. Um, so it also comes with A-arm guards. I wanted to show you guys the difference between their A-arm guard. Look at the thickness of this, and it's not heavy at all. Look at the thickness compared to OEM. Again, so this isn't gonna be a Kawasaki gripe post about how they really under provisioned uh, their protection under the bike. But okay, so this is the OEM. This is the Iron Baltic. It's absolutely positively night and day difference. I'm stoked, let's get to work. Something I'd like to mention is that there are nice color instructions here, along with number coded baggies with the, uh, the nuts, bolts, and washers that are associated, so the numbers are associated with what they, uh, what they call for in the instructions. So it's, um, you don't have to guess, you don't have to measure the bolts, you don't have to check what's an M6 and what's not. You can just say, bolt 11. Okay, I need bolt 11s. So that's kind of handy. So I was getting a little sketched out getting under a, under an ATV that was hanging from the rafters, probably at an angle like that. So I put it straight up and down. 
need to ensure that um, that I leave the bike after I do the install for, I'm gonna leave it for a good day so that any oil that rerouted itself uh, from being in an upward position, I put it back flat and let everything sort of trickle back down. While I'm here and have uh, everything visible, I'm checking my boots and make sure that there's no uh, that there's no issues with those. It's a it's a good opportunity to have a look underneath your bike and make sure that everything looks good. I'm looking at I'm looking at step one, and we can see that these are the long bolts, and they need to go. I need to remove this. This is the uh, the foot grip underneath the wheel well that on top of the wheel well there that has the the serrated edge that holds onto your boot i need to take this one off i need to take this one off and the other mount mounting points are right there right there right there and right there so i am going to take these bolts off and rough this into place stay tuned hey all uh this is me from the future this is me after i have done the full install of my iron Baltic skid plate. Two things that will help you. You need one of these. You need to borrow one of these. Either that or you're gonna have to have somebody help you. Um, I did this all alone and I'm really glad I had a clamp. Part two, you're gonna be putting a lot of these in. Um, don't put them directly into the plastic of the skid plate like I did. I had the I had the entire bike put together and then I found a bag of these. And these are little protectors that go like this so that the heads of these don't pull through the plastic. So don't get the bike put together and then realize you have a bag of these like I did. So learn from my mistakes. I hope the build helps. Um, I like to do builds for people. Um, anything new that I do, I, 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 I videotape. So this is my latest thing from Iron Baltic. It is the full plastic skid plate from Iron Baltic and uh, enjoy the show. So holding this in place is not a one person job. Um, if you have somebody to help you, that's great. But if you don't, like I do, um, I suggest holding it up and just zip tying it in place, just so to to bear the weight, to bear the weight of the uh, of the plate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath, and uh, just so that everything lines up, there's this 12 mil bolt under here, which is in my hand, 12 mil bolt that goes up underneath here and holds the back of the plate onto the back of the, onto the back of the bike so that's what i'm going to do is get that in place and then i'm going to work my way up i'm going to work my way up with all the bolts as you can see the 12 mil bolt here is in place which will allow the rest of these bolts that uh that need to be done there's my finger pointing along with here and over here. It'll it'll allow them to line up. So yeah, let's uh, let's keep going. Okay, so pro tip, um, you're gonna need a light. Put a light behind here so you can see through the hole, and get a clamp. Clamp this to the bottom of the buggy so that the flex of the plastic, you're not fighting against it. So yeah, like to mention that another spot that you're gonna need a clamp to hold this up tight into uh, up against your foot well when you're doing this bolt right here. So if you just simply put a clamp on and clamp this in, um, yeah, we'll get her all rocking and rolling. So as you can see, the back half is now fully installed with the help of a clamp. When you don't have a second set of hands, Use a clamp. You can see that these pieces of the inside of the fender here, I tucked them on the inside of this. I think they could have gone outside this as well, but I tucked them in because I could see this getting bashed before this gets bashed. So I tucked it, I tucked it behind. It's just a bit of flexible plastic. 
So it looks good so far. Will you look and see how thick this plastic is? This is some really, really nice quality stuff. I did strip one of the M6 bolts, but I that's that's my bad. I had it cross-threaded a little bit on the on the bolt on the inside. Um, as you can see on Cowies, the bolts are are tack welded to to tabs, and um, I think I may have cross I may have cross-threaded the uh, the bolt. So that's my bad. I the the, uh, the OEM bolt that came with the the skid plates there they uh, they work fine. So the next step we have is to install two of these plates. So the plates look like this, and this is to connect the front the back half to the front half that's to come. So. This is the connection connection piece using the M6 bolts. So now we have both of the mounting plates that connect the the rear to the uh, to the front of the of the skid plate mounted. Um, they're loose because I want to be able to wiggle them into place when I mount the front portion of the plate. All right, all right, all right. So I have these tacked in place. Uh, very loose um, just so that the uh, so the nuts catch the bolts because I'm gonna need some slack up here I'm gonna need to get on the old ladder and get up here uh, these go up against this and I'm just gonna bolt that in I'm gonna get these I'm gonna get these tight this and this tight and then I'm gonna tighten down the bottom ones and then we're good, we can put the A-arms on. I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to put these bolts in as well, so I'm glad I'm leaving every I'm leaving everything loose until I get those bolts in. Um, yeah. Ran into my first little hiccup. Um, right here, the way Cowie does this is they tack weld nuts onto tabs. Here and here, the nuts popped off. So you can see they're cheaply tack welded. Thanks, Cowie. Um, yeah, so what I had to do was I jigged up. I had a, a longer bolt that uh, this calls for M4. I think this is an M6. And I took a 10 mil wrench and I put tape on it on each side so that this would still fit in but it won't fall out if i when i'm back wrangling behind this uh behind the a-arm so that's the only real problem i had with this install so far so this has been a flawless install i'm pretty stoked um i'm just going to use the older hardware from my from my old skid plate um so it doesn't look as pretty as this stuff but this stuff's not that's not gonna look pretty for long so so yeah, I have this installed. I'm gonna do the other one with my fancy 10 mil uh, open wrench, put a bit of tape on each side so that the, uh, the bolt doesn't fall out. And uh, I'll get that in and then I'll tighten this all up. And then I'm on to the A-arms, folks. So I will tell you, a clamp like this is your absolute best friend. When it comes to putting on a skid plate so i have it i have the front where it joins on to the frame here underneath the plow or i'm sorry the uh, the winch we have this pinch together here otherwise it's a two-person job so part one of this is done the skid plate is on attached and tightened up. Uh, pardon my hair, folks. I, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I gotta say, without a doubt, this is the best quality skid plate I've ever seen in my life. I've seen a lot of them. I've seen a lot of them sort of like this, but, you know, added touches like this. 
It's like a skid plate for your skid plate in the part where it hits the most. I gotta tell you, if I can put this on, you can put this on. Um, I'm really stoked with the uh, with the results here. That being said, I'm gonna put the A arms on and call it. So yeah, um, there are these things that do this. They cover the bolts. So I figured that out at the very end of the project. So I have to go and replace all of these, which I don't mind doing. So I'm gonna show you the done product once I get that all done. <laughs> all right, folks, I'm done. I'm so stoked. I went from this flimsy, flimsy OEM, uh, A-arm guards, and this utterly destroyed thin aluminum skid plate to, you ready? This. This is the Iron Baltic, full plastic, including A-arms, skid plate. And it was worth every penny. I, uh, I'm very, very pleased with it. So now, now what I'm gonna do is I am going to, my wife has the same skid plate on her identical Brute Force 750. And I have the new, the new plastic skid plate from Iron Baltic. I am going to do a side-by-side -side skid plate beat the hell out of it test. Um, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna prove that the aluminum gets fetched up on rocks a lot easier than, than the plastic. And uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have one of these Iron Baltic skid plates, um, this video will help you. If you don't, I think you should probably buy one. They're very reasonably priced and uh, they ship to North America. So yeah, let's check it out one more time. Thanks again, folks. Like, share, subscribe.